Grace and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word selected for our devotion today is taken from the letter of James, reading from chapter 1. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is God's word. The television screen went black. And all of a sudden, a message appeared in the center of that blackness with a decorative graphic that said, stay tuned. Apparently, the network had experienced some kind of technical difficulty that had interrupted the program. It was a movie that we were watching, and it was quite entertaining. And naturally, we were disappointed, but we wanted to see the rest of that movie, and since it was not offered on another channel, we obeyed the command. We stayed tuned to that channel. It came back on. <laughs> and much to our amazement, it picked up right where it had left off. We didn't miss any of the movie. It was, was great. i got to tell you, i got to confess now, about 20 years later, that I can't remember what the film was. But I do remember the event. And I will grant you that this is a pretty poor illustration for what James is trying to communicate with us today, except that I think he, in a manner of speaking, uses much the same message to stay tuned. Not, not to God's word to be entertained, but to hear in God's word the voice of the source of all that is good and perfect. So stay tuned. God's word that is. God's word is the channel, if you will, by which God does his giving. Now, as evidence of that, just let me go back to what James said. He says, every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. That's a better reason to stay tuned to God's word than was a movie. Stay tuned to God's word. Think of what has been revealed to us in God's word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God put the sun in the heavens. I was driving to church this morning. At about 7.30, I looked in my rearview mirror, and there it was again in the eastern sky. That big orange glow that warms our days. If there were no sun, there would be no light on it. Or think about the clear night sky when you look up and you see those wonderful stars and the moon shining up there, realizing that it was God that placed them there. 
and that they reflect the light of the sun. You know, before we had GPS, something kids can even imagine, sailors used to navigate the oceans by means of those heavenly lights that God placed them in the sky. So accurate are their courses. All God's gifts are good and perfect. We should not be surprised by that. You and I have experienced the most blessed of all of them. Behind me on the wall is a visual reminder. God sent into this world his one and only son. Remember, it laid him in a manger. The child conceived in the womb of a young maiden named Mary. Virgin born child, Jesus, who would grow up living the life you and I cannot live to satisfy God's justice and be an acceptable sacrifice to pay for the sins of all people. All good and perfect gifts come down from above, from the Father of the heavenly lights. Jesus, the very life of the world. The Apostle Paul wrote, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him give us our things? So that we dare not forget that James points us to this. It's the most important of God's gifts to us. What that birth, that life, that sacrifice, that resurrection means to us. We already experienced that today as pastor. After hearing, confessing himself, the horrid confession of what we are. Announced by God's authority that we have been forgiven freely. God did that. So stay tuned. God's channel is his word for giving us forgiveness, new life, and salvation. You and I live with a certain hope that through this word of truth, God has revealed to us a savior for sinners, among them being us. In baptism, God made you alive in Christ, Paul wrote. We hear those messages all the time. The reason you and I can be confident in God's forgiveness and certain of our eternal life rests alone in God's unchanging word. The channel for his giving. So, James tells us this, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all God created. First fruits are the best. Those of you who did some gardening, you can always remember the joy of bringing in those first tomatoes or whatever it was that grew in your garden. It seemed to be the sweetest of all you were gathered during the season. That's how God is describing you and me. First fruits. Sweet joy of what has been planted in us, God's word that produces a faith that trusts in God's word, the channels for his giving. So stay tuned. God's good and perfect gifts came down from, from come to us from hearing the word. They, uh, they, they not only sustain us in our spiritual life, but they guide us in our physical life as well. Your soul salvation is dependent upon hearing God's word. Jesus told the unbelieving Pharisees, Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear, he told them, is that you do not belong to God. We do. After, after all these are, <clears throat> the scriptures have revealed Christ to us, Jesus said the scripture cannot be broken. That's right, not a single word can be changed. God is immutable. He doesn't change like shifting shadows is as James says. He's not like that at all. We can rely on him. That word which uh, was spoken to us about our salvation, our forgiveness, won't change. He won't say, I love you today, but tomorrow. He won't say, I gave you my son, but I'm pulling him back now. You're not worth it. He won't say, get away from me. I can't stand you. No, he says, I love you so much. 
that I have given my one and only Son to be your Savior. That's the God we have, and the channel for His giving to us is His Holy Word. And that should impress upon us the importance of hearing it. I mean, faith comes from hearing the message, which is the Word of Christ, the Gospel message, the good news of salvation. That faith is sustained and strengthened through the hearing of the Word. It is important to be here in church and hearing God's Word, but not just here. It would be kind of useless for you to hear what God has to say to you and be like the one James describes in the passage, looks at his face in a mirror and then immediately forgets what he looks like. We hear God's word. We know what we once were. We know what we now are in Christ. We know the purpose for our lives as Christians. We have been given a message that is dynamite, if you will, for transforming the lives of people. Paul said, Christ made you alive. God made you alive in Christ. Paul wrote at the beginning of the letter of the Romans. It's, it's the power of God, that gospel, for the salvation of souls. Power given to us and entrusted to us. It, in fact, it reveals to us that we need to stay tuned because this truth is important. God's word is also the means for our doing. You see, I could not do a thing for God until God had done something for me. And the same is true of you. It's impossible. I could not say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit, God working through the Word to reveal Christ to me. I could not do anything good. I could not be a good husband, a good parent, a good neighbor, a good citizen. I could not do anything pleasing to God until I understood what God had done for me. Paul writes in one of his letters, it's that love, Christ's love, that compels us. Compels us to live for God. Moves us to do that which is pleasing to God. Makes us realize that apart from that word that Jesus says, you can do nothing. That's why he told his disciples, remain in me and my words, that they remain in you. You will bear much fruit. You can't do unless you know what God has done. And what God has done. It's incredible. It's incredibly wonderful. So where was he last weekend? He was there. Did his love change? Did the victory on the cross change? No. Has your eternal life been secured and was it then revoked? No. For those of you sitting here, it looks like your physical lives were spared. Though you may have suffered the consequences of a horrible hurricane. This remains true. And the reason you need to stay tuned. God's enabling us to do His will by means of His Word. And doing His will is the purpose for our lives now as Christians. Stay tuned. It's the power for doing what pleases God. The Bible says that faith comes from hearing the Word of Christ. Jesus told his first disciples, as I said before, if you remain in me, you can do all things. Paul would write in his epistle, I can do all things through him who gives me strength in the way that that happens. You should be hearing the word. That word entrusted to us that has the power to change a sinner into a saint. To change a person who's going to hell into the one who's bound for heaven. To take a person who doesn't know God and make him a child of God. That's the power that's been given to us. The power for doing what is God, what, doing what God's word directs us to do is in seen in a religion, as James writes, that our God, that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless. Such a religion responds to the needs of those in their distress, physical and especially spiritual. We saw a lot of that this past week, didn't we? One of, one of our dear friends, the husband, was installed into his 
physician as pastor in Antigua last Sunday. They, uh, actually the Sunday before last, just in time to greet Irma as it advanced. Pam chatted with Sarah back and forth over the days that followed, getting little updates of what was going on down there on the islands. And I'm happy to report to you that the God into whose hands they had committed their bodies and souls and all things went to church this morning just like you have. Once again, to stay tuned to God's Word. Yes, the means by which God gives good and perfect gifts and the power by which we are capable of doing God's will. God help us to be a people then that stay tuned, trusting in the Word of God to help us carry out the work entrusted to the church to make disciples of all nations by means of